Hello Frio fans, welcome to our member Q&A, the place where our passionate and loyal members get the chance to give their thoughts and ask their burning questions to some of Frio's heavy hitters. We're lucky enough to be joined today by our Chief Executive Officer, Simon Garlick. Simon, thanks for your time today. Thanks for having me on, Brett. Looking forward to it. I hope you're ready because the questions have come flooding in over the last 48 hours on a whole range of topics. So what we've tried to do here is select the similar questions that have popped up. And to the members watching at home, if your question hasn't made it in today's show, we'll make sure we have to do this another time throughout the season. And hopefully we've gone with the weight of numbers on some of these topics. So Simon, are you ready? I am, mate. And just at the start, I just think it's a great initiative. Um, clearly, uh, we're having a great W season to this point, so everyone's excited from that perspective, but also finishing touches of the pre-season. So I can imagine there's um, some hairy questions in there from some people eager to see us kick off the well, year. Well, let's get stuck into it then. So we've got one here from Damien, a three-year member who asks, WA is really only just starting to be affected by COVID from a cases per day point of view. What policies are in place to try and ensure a healthy playing group for the majority of the season? Yeah, there's plenty happening in that space, Brett, and, and thanks for the question, Damien. Um, we've just had a great example. Our W program, um, including obviously all of the staff and playing group, just spent just under a month over in Melbourne and did a phenomenal job when you think about it to avoid any exposure whatsoever. Um, hey, the, the, it was a testament to their, their dedication, um, their discipline, and the processes they followed, little things like um, not eating together as a group, um, ensuring you know the uh, rapid antigen testings every day, uh, really careful with where they went in their extracurricular activities, and just took a, a really professional approach to it, which held them in such good stead we saw their performances. So I think as a club, we've been able to learn from that. Um, in the men's program at the moment, clearly in addition to all of the WA government protocols and requirements, um, there's an overlay of the AFL level three protocols that we're adhering to on a daily basis. Again, daily rapid antigen testing for all, all players and staff. Um, as a club, we've separated football and administration. Um, most administration are working from home for the time being for obvious reasons, but those that are, are completely separate from the football program. Um, we're seeing the guys meet uh, in small groups outside wherever possible, remotely where they need to. And whilst we encourage all of our members and supporters to come down and watch training, what we've looked to do is ensure there's, there's enough room. Um, you know, unfortunately, at this point in time, we're not doing autographs or things like selfies. What I can tell Damien and all of our members is that uh, our football program are doing a phenomenal job to this date. Um, they're doing everything within their power to reduce risk. But we know in reality we're a phone call away from, you know, whether it be a positive test or a close contact or whatever that may be, but we'll just continue to do everything with our power to make sure our players are available as they possibly can. This next one here comes from a 12-year member, Scott. He asks, how confident are you that we will be able to watch 11 home games at Optus Stadium during the AFL season this year? Uh, incredibly confident. More confident than I've been for two years, Brett. <laughs> um, it's... I think the, the announcement, the, the one key takeout for us from the um, recent announcement of the Premier with the, the hard borders coming down from March 3 was it gives us surety and surety around our fixture. And that's the one thing that we haven't had as a club. I think that overhang of potentially heading over east for an extended period or, or losing a home game uh, at, a, at a minute's notice. We had that with our, our game against North Melbourne last year, 24 hours out, and then the Carlton game which was far from ideal, had to get transferred to Melbourne. Um, that's just not going to happen now because the borders are, are open, which is just fantastic. So I think that's, the, that's one of the most exciting elements, not just for our members and fans who can plan their year out around the footy in that sense, but from our playing group too, knowing where they'll be, when they'll be, the training sessions in the lead up, and being able to play in front of an Optus Stadium full of purple again is something that we're really excited about. I'm excited too. Let's keep on that theme. So Shana, a 19-year member here, has asked, if the stadium is operating at 50% or 75% capacity and I've been told I can attend all matches, how will the seating arrangements work? Will we get our normal seats? Yeah, um, we've had experience with this over the last couple of years, as you, as you know, Brett, so we're pretty adept at, at dealing with these types of scenarios. Um, as it currently stands in the conditions of the state government, we'd be at 75% capacity for games at Optus Stadium. So um, in our conditions as a football club, what that means is that any reserve se seat full season member would actually get to sit in their seat. They're guaranteed both entry and to sit in a seat that they've been allocated as part of, of their membership. Obviously it gets a bit more challenging when it goes down to 50%. We don't believe it's gonna um, be on a regular basis, but in the instance that it is um, for a game or two during the year, 
Again, uh, those full season reserve seat members would be guaranteed entry. We wouldn't be able to absolutely guarantee them their seat. Um, we'd have to work through a ballot system, but we certainly would be able to guarantee them entry in that sense, and then we'd have work on it from there. So it'd be slightly more challenging, but again, I think underlines the point that um, if you haven't renewed yet, do so, because we want to make sure we get you into both games under 75% and 50% capacity restrictions. This is one here that I think a lot of the Frio faithful would love to know the answer to. So we've got a question from two-year member Zhu Ting here. He asks, will there be more of a push from our side to the AFL to have more primetime games, i.e. more Friday, Saturday nights, as opposed to a Sunday afternoon? Great question, Zhu Ting, and it's one we, we get a lot. The short answer is yes, absolutely. Um, we advocate every year to get as, as many of the uh, more desirable fixtures as we possibly can. Um, the reality of it is, and the AFL are quite transparent and open about it, and we've spoken about it regularly as well too, that uh, the broadcasters who, who pay a lot of money for, for the rights that they receive uh, are on the record as preferring clubs who are nearer to the top of the ladder, um, playing you know obviously competitive football, entertaining football for those prime marquee Friday nights, Saturday nights, Saturday afternoon fixtures. We clearly haven't been in that zone for the last few years, but it was interesting to see when we were contending late last year, we had a marquee fixture against Geelong in the back half of the season. And interestingly, for the four home games that we have currently sh uh, scheduled at the start of the year, um, we do have one Sunday game, but we've got two Saturday nights and a Friday night as well too. So I think that indicates that, you know, there's, there's some optimism, not just from inside us here at, at Coburn about our prospects, but the broadcasters and the AFL are seeing that as well too. It really does get dictated by your performance. So again, another great incentive for us to, to get some of those, those more preferred slots. Let's touch on country memberships now. So we've got a question from Fiona, another two year member who asks, are we able to create a country membership? I wanna be a member, but can't make it to the games. Do you know the percentage of country members that we have as a club? Yeah, yeah, we've got about 12% of our members who would qualify as country or, or regional in terms of where they reside. Um, and, and we do, we're really cognizant of the fact that uh, it's really challenging, particularly the Sunday twilight fixtures for people who live, you know, a couple of hours drive and more from Perth. Um, and, and that's something we're really mindful of. We get feedback to that and it's something we're trying to remedy as best as we can. In, in terms of the membership status, we've got our Purple Army membership. So the Purple Army membership um, provides the ability for supporters to um, support the club, uh, have that connection, get updates. Every single update that goes to a member certainly goes to a Purple Army membership. They get merchandise offers and the like. And they also get the opportunity to um, have access to you know, some of the biggest games, priority access to things like the Derby, the Home Derby and the like. Um, the other thing I'd suggest, and so we really want to continue to build that Purple Army membership. Um, and rather than zero it in specifically on a country membership, I really think that it fits that cohort well. And there's also things like um, general admission three game membership categories and even the seated five game membership. So for a, a, a member who lives a fair distance from Perth, knows they can't get to all 11 games, some of those categories would really suit. One here from Chris, an 18 year member. He asks, it's probably a bit late for this year, but instead of 11 barcodes to download and scan to get into Optus Stadium, could we just have the one barcode at the beginning of the year to make it easier to gain entry? Yeah, again, Chris is, query here is one that we get a, a bit and we understand that there's a level of inconvenience rather than traditionally where it's been a, a season that you've been able to download all at once that they're basically and it's a competition wide policy at the moment where it's an event by event type scenario so while slightly inconvenient the reason behind it is that um, given the last two years that we've had and the uncertainty with you know games changing at late notice capacity restrictions and the like we've really needed to have an element of flexibility. So rather than do it all at once and have a whole season, having that game by game allows us, while we've got far more cer certainty this year, I can understand when the AFL put the policy in place for 2022, they wanted to maintain an element of that flexibility. As I said at the top, we're covering a range of topics here. Let's switch Let's our minds it. back to retro round from last year. So we've got a question here from Damien, a 14 year member. He's asked, is there any chance we'll bring back the retro jumpers full time given the popularity? Popularity, it certainly was. <laughs> um, popular, it certainly was, Brett. Uh, phenomenal response. And we think there's an element of that popularity that was driven by the fact that it was a one-off. Um, we're relatively young in the whole scheme of things at 27 years of age as a club, but great Fremantle people have done phenomenal things and there's a lot to celebrate at our, at our club. 
So that's something we want to continue to do once a year. And we think that we can build that up and have a great deal of excitement on an annual basis from that perspective. And you overlay that with the fact that um, the overwhelming majority of our members identify with purple, understand that as our primary colour and, and the symbol of who we are. So we want to maintain that balance, but also ensure that we do some really cool things on an annual basis. This one made me smile. This one's from Sean. He asks, if you had a cloning machine and could clone any Freo player from any era to run out once again, who would you choose? That's a tough one. So you're basically asking me who my favourite player is, Essentially. I think, Brett. Um, tough question, Sean. I, I, let's start with W. I'm a massive Mim Strom fan. I think she's a jet, um, about to play a 25th game as well too, which is no small feat at Mim's age. Hard to go past Turbo. Epps is lock for all Australian this year. Um, as some of my staple favourites, the, the new additions this year have been phenomenal. Um, Dana East has come in and, and hasn't missed a beat. Um, the two Michaelas have just been on fire all, all year. Um, Anya is just a star and someone I'd love to have not just two but maybe three of. But if you're going to ask me if I could clone one W player to be our skipper in Hayley Miller, I just think she's remarkable on and off the field, but her, just her tenacity, the way she goes after the footy, keeps her feet, um, I think it would be incredibly handy to have two of Hales. Um, from a men's program, pretty hard to go past Pav and Fifey, <laughs> just from a pure greatness and performance perspective, but they're the obvious ones. Um, there is a theory running around that Dave Mundy is actually a client. Um, you know, if you're going to play for 18 years and do what he did, maybe he's just someone that we've just cloned once a year, every year, which sort of makes a bit of sense. Um, but uh, there's players I love watching now. Um, Freddie's uh, just, he's just sensational to watch. Walks, who came into the team last year, was phenomenal. Um, Switter, when he's up and running, I think it's electrifying, but I'd have to go for um, Seba, Caleb Sarong. If you're going to ask me to clone a player, particularly over the next 10 to 15 years, um, I think he'd, he'd be pretty handy. I wonder if Clone Dave is sitting on his couch at home watching this one. Which clone? Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah, there's so many. Right. Melanie, an 18 year member, she has asked, never in your wildest dreams could you possibly have imagined what was about to happen when you joined Freo as our CEO. Can you pinpoint what are you most proud of over that time? Uh, it's a really good point. It wasn't in the fine print. When I arrived in November of 19 and uh, things going relatively smoothly until about late Feb of, of 2020. Um, uh, there's a couple of things that jump out, Melanie, and, and thanks to you for your, your question. The, the way that the, the staff and board in particular were able to gel together um, and you know, along with you know, the playing group clearly, but I'll come to them in a minute, um, we're able to just work through what in reality is probably the most challenging time of our existence and ride it through, um, maintain you know, as much strength in the club from a financial viewpoint as, as we possibly could. Um, maintaining as many good people within the organisation was, was something to behold and, and something that I was privileged to be part of. Um, I think the growth and development in both of the playing groups over the last two years, when you think about the challenges that occurred, you know, went straight into a hub for season 2020 for six or eight weeks, um, jumped around again last year, uh, we've had significant growth and I think we're going to see the, the fruits of that in, in coming years. Um, but I think the most significant element and the thing I'm most proud to be associated with as a Fremantle person is the response of the Purple Army. Um, the, the commitment and support was just phenomenal. Um, and I've spoken about it many times. It's helped us be in a really strong position as a club at a time, uh, if, you had a, if you had a said that, you know, at the start of this, this pandemic and, and told us we'd be where we'd be, you would have taken it every day of the week and would have thought that was fanciful. So the, the support of the Purple Army has been phenomenal. And that's why we're so excited about, you know, round one's clearly the focus. But we've got March 27th against the Saints, you know, seeing Optus Stadium full of purple again, um, I think is clearly an exciting prospect for a lot of members and fans, but for our playing group as well, because they can just plan it out for the year. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I agree. I'm hanging out for that first home game of the season. Um, I want to throw a little last minute question in here, perhaps the most hard hitting of them all, you tell me. Right. But I've got a question here from eight year old Mitchell. Mitchell has signed up as a member for the past three seasons he would like to know do you get to go on the water slides at Coburn Arc for free because you're the boss of the Dockers? Um, this is a hard-hitting question, question a great one Mitchell and thank you for not only um, 
writing in and asking this question, but your, your, your loyal support over three years? Um, no, is the answer. It's, it's, very, uh, it's a restricted area, and it's one that certainly 46-year-olds uh, are not allowed or shouldn't be in. But I can say that all of my children have gone down the slides, and Mitchell, I can't wait to see you going down the slide at Coburn as well. It's pretty cool. Uh, just in a half a serious note, um, you know, we're incredibly fortunate to come from a region like Fremantle. Uh, the heritage, uh, the footy heritage and history there is second to none, and it's something that we really promote within our playing group and know that it's something that we really want to continue to reflect upon and build upon as we move forward. But we're very lucky to be at a, at a, at a facility like Coburn as well. Huge growth area and potential facilities second to none in terms of preparing our team to play AFL footy. And we're connected to the local community as well. As Mitchell said, we're, we've got a, a slide that we can slide down that I know you, you'll be heading straight towards after this, Brett. Um, but it, all jokes aside, it's phenomenal for us to be that connected. That's the sort of club we are. It's the sort of club we, we have been and will continue to be. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really exciting time on a number of fronts. And as we said, counting down the days to round one and then seeing all the Purple Army in round two. Mitchell, there you have it. The water slide scoop. Simon, thank you to you. Thank you um, to the members for all your questions. Hope you got a bit of an insight there. Simon, thank you very much. Good on you, Brett. And thank you for all the questions. Can't wait to see you all at the footy.